Oh boy, here we go. We are three quarters of the way through August. This is an interesting month to say the least, right? We got so much going on. Reynolds just cutting in half what to do with my bookings or lack thereof. <laughs> if you guys are new to the channel, welcome. I'm Steve. We are here going over our rental car fleets and how to make them run as smoothly as possible. I go over Turo, and Turo is the one that I mainly deal with, so that's why I go over Turo. There are a bunch more platforms out there, Avail, Get Around, Hire Car, all these other ones, but like I said, Turo's the one that I'm used to and the one that I deal with the most. If you guys are new to this and don't understand the whole concept of it, period, Turo is a car to car, not car to car, it's a peer to peer car sharing app where you can rent out your cars just like Airbnb, but for your car to other people. And they can take it, go do whatever they want, staycations, vacations, drive cross country. It sucks when they do it, but it happens. That's basically what you're able to do with this. Now I've been in this since uh, 2018, and at one point we had quite a few cars, over 50 at one point, and now I am in a different state doing my own thing and just recording the process, showing you guys how to do it and what you need to do to make it run as smoothly as possible, like I said. So if you guys ever need any help, by all means, check the description below. Got any links in there, got all my stuff that I use on the daily that you guys could possibly need if you need to get a hold of me, one-on-one, -on -one, whatever you need. But regardless, let's get into it. All right, so as we get into it, make sure you guys are doing all the stuff down below. You know, those three things that everybody keeps embedding into every channel, every video that you ever watch. I'm not even gonna say it, just do it. So August, this is an interesting month. There's so much going on. There's a, <laughs> you got, I mean, just, just in COVID world period, and and rentals let's just go back to just in the rental world period you got people going back to work people going back to school vacations over I'm not saying summers over but vacations are over so people aren't out traveling as much you do have business travels so that helps out a lot if you guys are in an area where there's a lot of businesses a lot of corporate stuff where people need a car to get around for the week for work whatever what have you now as far as tourism that's just gone to like non-existent and that's it's pattern it happens all the time every year it comes up and it's it, it shouldn't be a shocker by this point if you guys are new to this I mean it, hopefully you learned and saw some of the other videos like hey pre be prepared for this but regardless it happens and it comes up now there's a few things that you can do with this that's funny as I'm trying to record this I got people checking out of their cars and they are saying that they are checked out but they're taking pictures of the car while it's in their driveway <sighs> Whatever, anyway, gotta love it. Okay, so back to where was I at? This is why you gotta turn off all distractions when you're trying to get work done. So just in the world of car rentals, you have everything going against you. You have people going back to school, people going back to work, so people aren't using cars as much. Now, with this, you also have a huge surge of supply. There's that incentive that went out. Turo hit the news about being able to have cars available for the renters, uh, rental car companies being out, and you guys have just seen it. Just the whole, every market that I've looked at has just been blown up with those little blue dots or little purple dots, whatever, the ones that show that there's cars. So this is another thing that has made it tricky I've seen it with my cars I've seen it with other host cars even power hosts all-star hosts like it doesn't matter people are just having a hard time getting their cars out I've, I've talked to a couple uh, other hosts that they said man like I've normally have 20 something cars and this time yes it's slow but I haven't had a booking in any of my cars in, in the past week and a half two weeks and it's rough so here's one thing that I would suggest you know that this time is coming. You know it's not really a time to expand unless you have the capital and you're just like, yeah, let's go buy cars. But right now is not the time to be buying cars. You know this because the market is so freaking inflated. I Whatever. So back to now is the time to make sure that all of your maintenance is done. All of everything that needs to be done, if you need to get that car just completely detailed. You know, you've been kind of putting it on the back burners for a little bit. Go get it shampooed, go get the seats done. Like make these cars look as perfect as showroom floor condition. You know what I mean? Like make sure that they are out there and just they are set and ready for the months that are to come. Because the time is coming where it is gonna be just like the beginning of summer where it's just, they're booked, they're gone, they're gone, they're gone, they're gone, and you have to snooze them just to get this work done. So if you're able to, and hopefully you stack some cash aside, if you're able to, now is the time to make these repairs. Brakes, tires, oil changes, whatever maintenance is need to be done. Windshields out here in Arizona, I swear, 
Windshields are the worst. You're constantly getting broken windshields. Chips, all that, if you don't fill those things real quick, then it spreads and now you're out windshield. So definitely get all that stuff done that you can. Now the other thing that you can do to help try and boost your guys' uh, bookings, your views, go through, you're up to, I believe it's 20 pictures. You're allowed up to 20 pictures for your listing photos. Now, the more you have to say about your car, your descriptions, your pictures, this and that, the more that Turo's like, oh, this guy's serious, like, hey, let's get this thing out there. And just have it, basically, go out and take these pictures where they need to be. If you have time, run it up to the mountains, run it up to the lake, run it up to Staples Center or something like that where you, these people are wanting to take these cars and basically show them off. Show them off where you can be with these things. Show them off where these cars like to be. Instead of in the city, they like to be gazelles and they want to be out running and free. Now don't be showing pictures of the car doing 120 on the freeway. That's, that's the last thing you want. You don't want to be endorsing that. Show these cars out in the, out in the wilderness, out in the wild. <laughs> Make sure it just pops. It shows to everybody that, hey, you know what? I could really see myself being in this car going out to this destination. I could really see myself with the top off my Jeep up at the lake, you know, minus the mosquitoes. I hate those things. God, they're all over. Show that these cars are willing and able to be out, you know, Sedona, the Grand Canyon, Vail, Vegas, the beach, Big Bear, Mammoth, any of those places. If you're able to get out there and hey, what is that? It's an excuse for you to get out of the house and go on a trip. You got the car down anyway, might as well make it happen. That's the way I see it. So make sure you guys are going out there. Check your descriptions. Make sure everything is just on point. Everything is to the T so that way you are getting put out there. That you are boosting your algorithm with the Turo platform so that way when you go search a car, hey look at that, mine's in the top three and hopefully the first one. But make sure you're doing whatever you need to to make sure that you're up there. The other thing that you can do to help boost your views and boost your car in the algorithm is your response rate. If you put it on Instabook, you're able to kind of boost your views that way because if people are looking for a car, they wanna know that, hey, for sure, I don't have to wait on somebody to do this. I don't have to wait for somebody to approve it. I can book it and bam, instantly, I have a car, no, no questions asked, hands down, I know that I can go pick it up. Whereas if it's not Instabook, now you're waiting and you're like, man, I really hope that this host will approve me, I'm a new renter, you know what I mean? Like, I, I get it, no one wants to rent to new renters, no one wants to rent to, to somebody who has a profile from 2018, 2017 with no history. Like, everybody gets scared, I don't know why, it is what it is, like, these people could have set up profiles. Just give them a chance, right? Everybody had to give you a chance with your first car, saying that, oh, I don't know if I trust that car. Like, at some point, you have to give these people a chance. So quit stressing so much over who's gonna be in your car and just do that Instabook. I mean, if you're not comfortable with it, by all means, don't do it, but that will help boost everything. The other thing you can do that'll help boost it is set up for that delivery. If you're not delivering within a certain radius, I mean, it's just, it's gonna be hard. Me, personally, I only deliver to the one airport, and honestly, I make it to where people come to me. I don't wanna go out and deliver but that's my personal preference. But I also do set it up as I deliver. So that shows up in a whole nother spectrum too. I don't say I deliver to guest location, I just, I, that's not the route I wanna go, but you can do this. If you're able to, then might as well set up 50, 100 mile radius. I don't know about 100 mile, but whatever you guys are comfortable with, set up that radius, and this will be huge too, because now you're gonna show to that many more people. If you are making a full-time gig out of this, this could be very well worth it. I did have one guy, he asked me, he's like, hey, I can't pay for this $80 Uber to come to you, can you drop the car off to me? And I'm just thinking, really? Like, you, you can't pay for an $80 Uber, but you expect me to pay for, <laughs> uh, it's gonna, but you expect me to pay for a hundred and, $60 Uber basically to do the same thing. Like you're doing the same thing. Come on, man, you think I'm working here for free? But anyway, set up those deliveries and make sure that it's still worth your while because your time is valuable. That's the one thing you cannot get back is time. So make sure it's worth it for you guys. If you do set up these parameters, even if you set it up and it's a $120 delivery fee like or something ridiculous where you know that they're not gonna do it, it'll still show up that you deliver. So it brings more attention to your listing. So there's that way to go about it. Make sure your descriptions, they give you, you know, X amount of characters to describe your car. Fill it up, make it happen. Make sure that everything that's in there, I mean, it just pops, just tell them a story. Tell them a story with that car, like, oh man, this car, it loves long walks on the beach, right? Sunsets, <laughs> you know, whatever you need. Just make sure it's in the description and 
really sell the experience because ultimately that's what it is. Turo is all about the experience. So go through and check all your pictures. If you guys need to update them, update the pictures. If you need to update the descriptions, do that. If you guys need to do the maintenance on these cars, make sure it's done. It's documented. Like You guys are set so that way when it comes into the season, when it's just ramping up, you're good. You're golden. You don't have anything holding you back right off the bat. Now for me right now, my bookings happen to be like, they're, they're all locals. I'm getting some here and there that are flying in, but honestly, like I said, my my prices to deliver are enough where it's better for you to come to me. I am getting some people that are willing to Uber to me, but I also have a bunch of people that are offering free delivery around my area. And quite simply, I don't get it. You guys aren't making money. I, what? But to each their own, I will make sure that I'm doing what works for me and my system. But with that, I'm taking the risk of either a car not booking or getting a bunch of local. Which I know everybody gets scared with the locals renting your cars. Yes, statistically showing, you will have more issues with locals in your cars than people out of town. The only thing that people out of town do is leave their dirty old shoes on your dash and leave footprints on your dash and I cannot believe that like what what are you doing but for the most part they're taking care of these cars they're traveling for business or they're vacationing so they're gonna take care they're a little bit more responsible where if it's a local like I said some things it, it all just depends on the renter and you know exactly which ones are gonna be a pain which ones are not right now I currently have a guy that's still not responding for checking in and I'm just kind of waiting before I basically drop the hammer and say, no, nope, I'm not gonna rent to you, but it's another local. And I'm just like, man, I don't wanna be that way. But for the most part, most of my locals are still pretty good. I've been getting a lot of you know, business owners, people that just need a car while their car is down. So they are treating it pretty decent. So you just kinda, kinda just weigh the risk and the reward with that. But me personally, I don't mind if I'm renting to local. And I also do know that it's very possible I'm not gonna get a booking until a day later or the day of, or you know what I mean? So if, if you're one of those people that just, you need that security where you're like, oh, okay, good, this car's booked for the next three weeks or the next two weeks, or this, this, you know, it sits for two days and then it's gone again. Like if you need that, then by all means, yes, this is a little bit more difficult. You will have to tweak your prices a little bit more. But for the most part, when I do my stuff, I set the prices where obviously it's worth it and I try not to price gouge my customers as well. That's the last thing I want to do. I'm not trying to go out there and just highway rob these guys. You know, if there's no cars, I'm not going to be like, hey, this car is like 80 bucks a day or 100 bucks a day for my Fiesta. You know what I mean? Like I try and make it to where it's as legit as possible. There are many things, like I said, you can do during these down times. Definitely make sure you take care of your cars figure out what you need to do, keep track of all the stuff that you have not done or what you've done in the past to make your cars go out and just realize that the bookings will come and hopefully you stacked enough cash that you're able to cover everything while the car is down. So hopefully this helped out. By all means, if you guys ever need anything, feel free to reach out, like, subscribe, do all that stuff and we will catch you guys on the next one. Keep grinding, keep hustling, keep making that money y'all. Later.